Hey everyone, I'm Danny and welcome to Muggle Magic. So the last DIY that I did was the Weasley's Wizard Weezes catalog, and inside that catalog there was something called the Haunted Deck, and I had to recreate the back of the cards from that Haunted Deck because um, it was scattered all over the page, and all I could find were low resolution versions of it. So I created a back to that card, and in my search to find images of these cards, I found that there actually is an official version of the deck, so I ordered it. And some of you might already know because you've seen the last video I did, which was a review of that deck. Needless to say, if you've seen the video, I wasn't really happy with it, the quality wasn't very good, and if you want to know specifics, you can check out my review. But I decided to make my own version of these cards because I don't think that the official version did it justice at all. It didn't look very good. I will also be uploading a video comparison of the official cards and my cards. So today we're going to be making Weasley's Wizard Weezes Haunted Deck, a complete 52 card deck, 54 if you include the Jokers, as well as a box to keep them in. I put a lot of time and thought into these cards as I was designing them, so uh, I hope that you guys like them. Go ahead and check out the links in the description to uh, the free templates that you can download from instructables.com and a list of supplies that you will need, and let's get started. So the first thing you wanna do is download and print the templates. These are free on instructables.com. This should be a 10 page, actually a 20 page PDF because each page has a, a back to it. So you wanna print these out double-sided on a thick cardstock. I got 110 pound cardstock, and you wanna make sure that it's smooth too. You don't want a, a rough or textured cardstock because you want the cards to be able to slide around on top of each other like a normal deck of cards would. You'll notice that there is one page that it looks kind of weird. It has some cards on both sides. It has a, a blue card on it. This I will explain later. So go ahead and take this one and put it on the top of the stack, just like this, and then line them up as best as you can. Um, try to get it as perfect as you can lined up and then we are going to clamp the pages together with some paper clamps. We're gonna use four clamps, just put one on each edge of the uh, stack of pages. And when you do this, make sure that you leave a little bit of room here because we're gonna be cutting along where the red meets the white. All right, so now at this point, you could do one of two things. You can take your ruler, you're going to take your uh, X-Acto knife, you're gonna hold your ruler steady and hold your pages pretty tightly underneath. Push down so that they don't slip around and then we're just going to cut along these lines and you're gonna go over it maybe 11 or 12 times just to make sure it goes all the way through. And this is pretty difficult with this cardstock because it's so thick. I recommend using a paper cutter. If you don't have one, you might be able to go to like a local library. A local printer might also have a paper cutter that you could use and you're just going to want to cut all of these out. For this part, you definitely do need a paper cutter if you want it to look good. I have cut all of these out just in small stacks, like instead of stacking them up, I just kept them in small stacks, flipped them over, and as you can see, there are cut guides on each card in each corner. So you line your ruler up with these cut guides, and then you can just slice off the excess uh, edges around the cards. And obviously we're gonna wanna clamp them together when we do that. But I did that the first time, and they just, the cards didn't look very good. Some of them were just slightly smaller than the others because I did it in stacks. So one stack turned out all the same size, but then the next stack, it wasn't perfectly the same size as the first stack. So each of the six stacks were just slightly a different size. I wasn't too happy with that. I wanted them all to be the same size. To do that, I stacked them up and I used big paper clamps. We need two big paper clamps to put on each side of this stack. And then we're going to flip it over and then you use a paper cutter that can cut through a good amount of, of pages at the same time and line it up with the cut guides and then just trim off all four of these edges. It's faster and it comes out looking a lot better. 
So now you should have a deck of square cards. And if we look in the uh, Weasley's Wizard Weezes catalog, the cards are square, but to make them more like real playing cards, we probably want to round the corners. Also, they're much more comfortable to handle if they have rounded corners rather than uh, square corners. So I'm just gonna use this corner rounder. It's basically like a hole punch, only it uh, clips off the corners to make them a rounded edge like this. And we're going to do that to all four corners on each card. And now that makes the card just look much better in my opinion. It looks more professional if it has rounded corners. Let's go ahead and do each four corners on all of the cards. And it's not going to take you that long. It's a little, you know, monotonous. So just put on an audiobook or something or watch some YouTube videos as you do it. It's going to take you maybe five minutes, ten minutes or so. That's how long it took me to do all of them. And when you're all done, you should have a full deck of cards. I think it turned out pretty good for a homemade deck of cards. Um, we have two jokers, which the jokers were not included with the official deck, so I had to make these. And there are some other cards that weren't included, and there are a lot of things that I did to make this deck um, accurate. Now let me explain um, what all these extra cards are that you just printed out. You have the uh, Muggle Magic advertisement card because, you know, all playing cards, when you get them, they come with a little ad card and then they come with two jokers and a full deck of cards. So I wanted to at least do that. But these are supposed to be part of the Muggle Magic line of cards, so they need to have some kind of like magic involved, you know, like card magic, like Muggle Magic. So I included some trick cards. We have a couple of aces that are actually fours on the other side. And then we have one card that has a blue back and a red back on the other side. If you do any type of uh, card magic and you've ever used a gaff deck, you probably know what to do with these cards. And I will show you a magic trick that you can use uh, one of these cards with to do. However, I will do that in an, a separate video. And when that video is up, it will be linked in the description of this video as well. All right, and now we are going to print out the box for the cards. So go ahead and just use your ruler and X-Acto knife to cut these straight edges. We're gonna use scissors too, but we wanna get some of these edges straight. Like these bottom edges here, we probably want straight. And then we want to definitely make sure that this top edge right here, along here, is straight. We want to make sure that the edge along here is um, straight. And then we want to make sure that this edge along here is straight. Now we should be at a point like this. Take your scissors and cut off all of the excess white all along here. There's some smaller parts on the inside here and here that you need to cut off, but it shouldn't be too difficult. Now that we have the box completely cut out, we need to prepare to fold this thing. And um, the first time I made it, I folded it without doing any type of scoring and it just didn't turn out that great. So you definitely want to score this before you fold it. Um, you can see where the fold lines are because like it you can see kind of like where the grimy lines are around the box So that should help you where the fold should be and the way we're gonna score is You need to line your ruler up where you want the uh, Fold to be and I'm just gonna use the blunt end of the scissors like you can see one end here is rounded So if I use that it's not gonna cut it's just gonna kind of leave a little dent along an indent along which is what scoring is you can do it with your scissors like that or you could use like a mechanical pencil without any lead in it so there's one across the top there too there's one right here one right here right here one here and then the last one is right here now that we have the box all scored it should be easy to make folds where they need to be. It's 
So the whole box is folded. Now we just have to glue it together and we should be done with the box. So for the gluing, just get a little piece of scrap paper and a glue stick. So here we'll just put some glue here and here on this flap. And then we're just going to fold it under like this. And we're gonna do that on both sides. Just fold it under. So again, just add glue to that flap. And then we're just going to fold it in and glue it right here. And the last gluing that we need to do is this very bottom part. We're gonna put glue here and then just glue it closed like this. So go ahead and apply your glue and then just close it like this. You can put something in here like a pencil or I'm just gonna use one end of my scissors to make sure that the bottom gets glued closed pretty well, just to put some pressure in there. So you should be able to close it up like this. And yeah, that works. And now we can take our deck of cards and we can put it into the box we just made. And it should fit pretty much perfectly into this box. Now I designed this box based on an actual uh, deck of poker cards, a box of poker cards. So this is what you can do is take an actual box from a deck of bicycle cards and just compare it to this box. And it should be pretty much the same. One thing that I will say is that in the front here, you can see that it kind of opens, like there, there are a couple of slits here and here and it opens even further than just the top. So we can mimic that with our box. Just take your scissors and make a little slit right here, and then another small slit right here, about the same length, and then just fold it over on itself like this. So now, when it opens up, it opens even more, just like the poker deck. There is one last detail that we need to add. As you can see on this box from the bicycle cards, it was sealed with a sticker. So you want to print these uh, Weasley's Wizard Wheezes stickers that I made on sticker paper, or you could print them on regular paper and use glue, but I, I recommend using the sticker paper because you're gonna get a better result from that. I've already cut a couple of these out as I was uh, you know, practicing building this deck box so anyways just cut one of these out just cut off all of the white from around the sticker and use your corner rounder to round off the corners of the sticker so the sticker should end up looking like this so now we can take our deck of cards put it back into the box and then take your uh, weasley wizard wheezes sticker and line it up Now we have sealed our box with the Weasley Wizard Weezes sticker. So this is what the deck would look like if it were for, for sale somewhere. You would get it. Um, it would have the sticker on it. You just make a little slit right here to open it up. And yeah, that's about it. If you want to win the cards that I made in this video today with the box, I'm going to have them in there sealed with the sticker. There's a link in the description to how you can enter that giveaway. This is going to be a weekly giveaway, so it's only going to be going on from seven days from when I post this video. Speaking of giveaways, we're approaching on the 10K giveaway, and I wanted to give you guys some more details about it because the last video that I uploaded, I didn't really say much about what the giveaway was going to be all about because I was still coming up with ideas. But what I want to do is have three winners instead of just one because 10k seems like you know something special so let's do something different we're gonna have three winners um, and there's going to be um, more than three prizes to choose from so basically the way it's gonna go there's gonna be a uh, first prize second prize and third prize uh, the first prize winner gets to choose their prize first second gets to choose second and third gets to choose third and then there's probably gonna be some leftover prizes after that which I will just you know host giveaways for 
uh, leading into the future. As for the prizes, I know we're going to have the Marauder's Map with the hidden footprints and reversible cover. We're also going to have the Quibbler, and that is uh, 20 fully readable pages. Another prize is going to be the Wizard Weezes catalog that I did in my last DIY video. And I'm going to be adding more uh, prizes to this giveaway leading up to the 10k subscribers. And now to announce the winner of my last giveaway, which was the Weasley's Wizard Weezes catalog. It's 10 full pages completely reproduced by me based on the official movie prop. And the winner is Jeff Gear. Congratulations, and I've sent you an email with details on how to claim your prize. Remember, I get a lot of ideas for these DIYs that I do from your comments. So if you have an idea for something that you want to see me do in the future, definitely leave a comment below and let me know. If you're interested in seeing more DIY videos having to do with Harry Potter and more, go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. Alright, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.